Welcome to Beyond the Beers. Men breaking the stereotype through conversation. We men love a good yarn, some banter, even better over a beer or tea. Sadly for many men, it never goes deeper than that. This show is a place for men to go beyond the surface level conversations, a chance to learn, listen, laugh, and grow. I'm your host, Mike Campbell, man coach and author of Amazon bestseller for men's health, Unleash Your Alpha. Let's break stereotypes through conversation. Let's go beyond the beers. I'm your host, Mike Campbell, and today I have with me Scott Tweedy, TV host and, as I'm calling him, professional prankster. Good to have you here, buddy. Mikey, professional prankster. I love that. <laughs> I did like a kid's show for four years and now. Everyone thinks I'm pranking them all the time. I'll do it today. <laughs> <laughs> what, is this beer? Is this actually beer? Is this what you got? So, Scott and I met last year when we both went to Cambodia with the charity organisation Project Futures. Uh, to raise funds and awareness in the fight against human trafficking. Now, that was a gruelling um, but amazingly rewarding trip for me for many reasons, and one of them because of the connections uh, and friendships that I made. Um, none more present than Mr. Scott Tweedy himself, um, someone that I instantly um, fell in like with, um, incredibly friendly, um, genuine, and totally personable, um, which clearly worked on me. That's why he's sitting here today. So, um, Scott, without further ado, should we get into the show? Mate, let's do it. Hit me with the hardest questions you've got, Mike, and you <laughs> see if you can crack me. All right, so welcome to the show, mate. Uh, it's great to have you here, obviously. So, I'd like to start by you know, getting a little bit more um, about you. Some of the audience may not be that aware of you. Yep. Some may, but they see the Scott that they see on TV. So, can you give us a little brief how you spend your time and how you make an impact? Yeah, well, I suppose... TV is one thing, you, you know, you've got to wear your makeup and all the glitz and the glam, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and I, I try and make myself 100% genuine on screen with TV but it's, it's hard to do sometimes when you're just talking about music and movies or pranking kids. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more to me but my mission in the next you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years is to just still 100% be myself and be the sort of person that I want, like you know, when I meet role models of myself, I want them to be. So it's like if I'm in a pub or I'm in a, a grocery store and someone's seen me on telly, I want them to feel comfortable to come up to me and be like, hey mate, how are you? And have a chat with me. So that's sort of my 100% mission. I think that comes right back to how I was brought up with my parents and my sisters, a, you know, really nice family, great um, values in our family, definitely weren't a well-off family, so I've worked my ass off to get to where I'm at today, mm -hmm. where I'm at in this position. But yeah, it's just about being a, a genuine good bloke, I think, and that's sort of my 100% mission and, and I hopefully people get to know that and when I meet people that's definitely my mission to show them that's the sort of person I am. Very cool, very nice and I think absolutely I personally pick up on that um, in dealing with you but also the videos that you put out on social media and stuff I, I think we get the real you and that's one of the things that you know attracted me to you I suppose in terms of our friendship when we were um, getting covered in mud and having sore asses cycling through Cambodia. <laughs> Mate and the dehydration as well I spewed one day so uh, that was hard, hard stuff on the bikes but no look there's a lot of bullshit in the industry I'm in and there's a lot yeah. of um, you know fake personalities a lot of yeah. people that are just in the game to become famous like my goal is not to become famous but my goal is to um, definitely become like a household name to become more of a leader and like yep. to, to be a voice to great organizations like you know Project Futures like that's that's a terrible thing that's happening in the world and it's a human problem like sex and human trafficking I've got two older sisters like I couldn't even begin to imagine if mum or dad sold my sisters to a brothel when they're yeah. like you know they you saw it in Cambodia how oh, yeah. young the girls were it's like six seven eight year olds like 40 year old Westerners go over there to sleep with them. Like it's disgusting. So yeah. my mission is to really, you know, use entertainment, put smiles on people's faces and sort of break away from how much serious stuff is in the world today. So yeah. I think there's always a space for that, you know, sigh of relief, take the piss out of myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then fingers crossed, build my profile to then bring action to, to areas in this world that need action. Very nice. And you're obviously doing that to some degree. But thanks for sharing about um, the industry that you're in. Because, you know, from the outside, I suppose, a lot of people can probably think that that's the case. Oh, maybe there's a lot of fake people and that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm interested to delve into that a little bit and how you deal with that. Is that something that you remove yourself from? Or is it something that you kind of lean into in terms of, you know, one, you try and be genuine yourself. But do you avoid those situations and people? Do you kind of talk about that, confront? Is there, is there a way that you actually address that stuff? Yeah, look, I'm, 
I'd love to sit here right now and be like, no, I'm 100% myself, but I'd be, I'd be lying to myself and to people out there. Like, there's part of me that has to play the game and, you know, yep. you've got to climb the ladder. And, you know, I'm here and I want to be here and there's a long way to go. So it's about, you've also got to respect people that are in higher positions than you, even if you don't believe what they're about. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, in any opportunity I can just sort of break away from the norm and, and be a genuine human being yeah. um, and, you know, bring across my morals and values, I yeah. 100% will do that. So yeah, yeah. it is interesting. You know, I meet the biggest celebs in the world to interview them. Mind you, don't be fooled. When you do interviews on TV, you get about seven to ten minutes in a hotel room with them. So you don't really get that much time with them. Yeah. But 99% of them are actually all really nice, genuine people. So... I haven't come across too many wankers and too many people where I'm like, God, you're terrible. Um, so it's, it's actually surprised yeah. me cool. that the industry isn't too bad yeah. um, in that regard. So a lot of people, maybe it's just in Australia, like in America, it could be a different league as yeah, well. Yeah. So it's, it's surprised me in my seven years of being in the industry how good it is so far. But you've just got to play the game as well in some areas and also put up with the crap in other areas. Yeah. I can understand that. So you obviously uh, enjoy making people laugh, pranks, right? And being yourself and bringing that into the world. So then on the flip of that, are there conversations and things that you perhaps struggle to talk about in your own life or maybe, you know, in your public life? Look, I do struggle to have conversations sometimes and, and my job is conversations. So <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, I, there's moments where I reflect on them, whether it's one day, a week ago, a year ago, where I was like, damn, I wish I kind of spoke up in that scenario. Like, there's a few moments, you know, when I was at school and you could have seen a kid getting bullied and you just don't do anything about it. And yeah. like, it's, it's so much easier to, to look back on that and go, mm-hmm. I should have done something, but that, that does still sit with me some days where you're like, oh, I could have made a difference, yeah. but I didn't, but I'm gonna learn from that. And mm-hmm. now moving forward okay. in my life, you know, work towards standing up for what I believe in and, and yep. voicing my opinion. Um, just an example the other day at work, which is um, a hard one, and I do lots of different productions, so I can't tell you where and which production it was, but, you know, a, a person in a higher position um, put a girl in like an uncomfortable position, almost like a, putting her down because she was a girl in front of like a, a crew of guys. And it 100% should have been a scenario where I should have stood up for it. Yeah. But I was worried about losing my own job if I did that. Yeah. And so I think it's, for me, it's having conversations now about those sort of things and yeah. going, there's got to be a line here where I've got to not care so much about what's in it for me and, and do the right thing for, yeah. for everyone involved, especially women, because, you know, once again, with you and I being connected to Project Futures and men being a problem in this yeah. world with like, you know, being the demand and supply for, for strippers, for yeah, prostitutes, for, for all that sort of yeah. stuff, we have to help the girls out as well. Like, yeah. you know, so it's, it's us that has to voice our opinion. Absolutely. So for me, not having conversations about those sorts of things when I should be yeah. is a definite area in my life I want to work on. Yeah. Um, on more of a personal level, I suppose, yeah. just my mates day to day, like we, I talk up a storm with them, <laughs> but I suppose I don't dive into those areas like yeah. just, hey, like, you know, your mum might be sick, how are you going with that? And, and digging into more personal conversations yeah. with people, I suppose that's an area in my life I don't talk about enough. What would be something else? What about, say, in your relationship with your partner? We, we're pretty open with each yeah. other, I suppose. We both come from... Um, we're very lucky to have two families where the parents are like still together and both been married for over 30 years. So I can't really come from experience of like a broken marriage family yep. and that and that's, would be a whole other storm for people to go through. But yeah, yeah. I personally haven't gone through that. But with Georgia, my girlfriend, we, um, we're very open with each other. Um, cool. And we... Yeah, I don't think there's areas in my relationship. I'd say more, if there's one more area of my life, it's more like financially. Yeah. Whereas I'm so committed to where I want to be at, sometimes I don't think about how to get there financially. It's just yeah. like, pin my ears back and I'm like, you know what, if I work hard enough in this world, that will come. Yeah. So. I think that's a pretty common one for a lot of people as well. Yeah. Um, I was having a conversation about that recently with someone who was a financial planner, basically. Yeah. And the bottom line was, so many people are in that place. Yeah. And it's something that we maybe avoid or don't but address even so much. Like in Sydney, in this day and age, like how expensive it is to live in Sydney and try and, you know, obviously the baby boomers have bought all the property <laughs> and China's bought the other parts of property as well. How, man, how the hell are we going to get a house in Sydney? So like, but that's sort of part of me, I 
that's conversations and stuff I just ignore. Yep. I'm like, okay. stuff it. If I'm so driven to where I want to be at, that will come later. Yep. But part of me goes, maybe you should be having those conversations. Okay. I studied commerce and economics at uni. <laughs> maybe I should be uh, like mapping out my life. Something a bit more. to think about. Okay, so let's use that finance and, and looking at your future, right? Yeah. And clearly, um, what industry are you in now? You're on TV, but yep. you studied what? Commerce and marketing? Commerce and economics. And economics, finance, sorry. Yep. So then if you could go back um, to, how old were you when you went to university? Like 17, 18? 17, 18, yeah. So if you go back to that guy, it doesn't have to be in the field of, of finance, but yep. if you could have a conversation with him, what would it be? Um, I think it would be still don't worry about the money. <laughs> Like, I think I, all, all the money I've earned, like, I, I reinvest in myself, and I find yeah. that really important to, mm-hmm. like, build on my personal IP. And I yeah. think, you know, in the next two, three, four years, that will really pay off um, yeah. for what I've been reinvesting to myself, whether it's been for my appearance, whether it's been for um, opportunities to film more stuff. Yeah. Um, I think that, don't worry about that. But what I would tell myself all those years back is to um, not be so tunnel vision, I suppose, and open yeah. myself up to some other opportunities as well. Um, it would be probably to find mentors earlier. Yeah, okay. I've found in the last couple of years having mentors has really got me on track to where I yeah. want to go to um, and you know, helps, helps me make decisions. Like if I've got a decision which is a big one, just putting it past a few successful people. Yeah. I bet you could ask me what does success mean later on. We'll get to that. But yeah, um, which I, people that I consider successful, yeah. um, they've helped me a lot. Yeah, so, yeah, cool. And I'd probably also say to younger Scott, um, I'd probably also say keep having good times, man. <laughs> I don't know. I think yeah. there's not too much I regret so far. Yeah, yeah. Um, because everything I've actually had a really nice career and I've been super lucky yep. with opportunities, which have led on to other opportunities. So there's not much at the moment I'd change. I'd probably just dig into more. Um, you know those those things I mentioned. Yeah. So uh, one thing that I would take from that is. One, you, you're not lucky so much as you've created your own luck by putting yourself in those situations, right? Yeah. Which is something I think very important to, to note. Um, but okay, so having faith in yourself, clearly, hence why you're not going to tell him to worry about the money because there is a faith in yourself, so continue to have that. But look for people who can educate you and provide you with a path of, path of kind of least resistance and well, best look, practice. To, to take it back to that, like, I'm not going to lie, why I did commerce and economics was because I... Went to a private school, but mum and dad worked their asses off to send me to that private school. So I was like basically the poor kid in this private school. So I was surrounded by all these rich kids. I became infatuated with money. And I was like, I want to be rich when I'm older. Yeah. And so then I was like, well, I'm going to be a merchant banker. And I was like, they have like boats and, you know, Ferraris and this and that. And I was like, genius. And it's probably for the first three years of uni, I was just lying to myself. And I'm yeah. sitting in these lectures and they're like, who read the financial review this week? And everyone puts their hand up. Mate, I went surfing that, that morning and filmed <laughs> with my friends, you know. So I was just living this lie. And I think it was around like 2021 20, that it just clicked. And it was like, you know what? You need to follow your heart and follow what you're good at yeah. and, and just back yourself and see what happens. And that's when nice. I started mucking around, making little like videos. My favorite subject at school was film and TV. So I sort yeah. of went back to that still while studying commerce and economics. And then, as you said, I just sort of put myself out there and... When you put yourself out there, the world actually listens, you know, and it was like people start to back you because you back yourself, and that's when the first TV gig came along. Very nice. Very nice. Nice little message there, I think. Um, but I want to touch on that very quickly because I think that's uh, something I see a lot of men fall into is money, success, right? Mm. And I think there's a couple of other things that we fall into as well, sex, amount of, or perhaps how hot our missus is or something like that. Um, and another one when we're at that age of teenagers is around our physical ability uh, or perhaps our actual kind of appearance. Yep. Um, so for you, have those had an impact on you? Obviously, we spoke about money outside of that. But then what would you define as success for yourself? Look, I reckon until recently, I'd tick every one of those boxes you just yep. mentioned. Money. Is, and it's still... I'm actually, I don't care about money anymore, but I care about having money to do the things I want to do. Yep. So that's like, there's, there's a limit to how much money I want to like make and I still want to get it into that bracket. But that's just so I can film more ridiculous things. Like, you know, go, imagine yeah, yeah. taking a three camera shoot on our Cambodian bike ride. Like the amount of stuff, I filmed yeah. a lot of the bike ride just with my GoPro and phone, but if you had more resources Absolutely. to do more stuff, I reckon I could tell bigger and better stories. Yeah. So money's still like important to me, but mm-hmm. not 
a lifestyle important. Like yeah. I, I don't dream of driving down a street in a Ferrari. Like I look at those guys and just go, good on you. But some of my friends love that and that's yeah. great. So cars and, and, you know, I still want a nice house because I love entertaining. But yep. um, physical appearance, mate, I go to the gym. I, I take all the little shakes you want to take. So I, I, I must say I, I do care about my physical appearance. Yep. I'm a bloody twig and I don't think I'll ever put on weight. So I've got the dream metabolism right now. In a couple of years, that will click over and then I'll be like, Mike, mate, how do I lose this belly? <laughs> but physical appearance, cool. I, I do care about that. Yep. And, I, yeah, yeah. and I'm conscious about that, mate. I, if you, there's a mirror in a room, I'll find the mirror. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, just... and so I think like, that is an important um, point because you know, for me, I'm not talking about we can't, we can't seek those things, right? Yeah. Um, they're absolutely important. For me, it's got to come back to why are they important? Right. Yeah. So um, sex is, is an example for me. Um, it feels good. We love it. Like let's not lie. Yeah. Um, but what it provides for us, for a lot of us men, is connection. Like we're humans. We seek connection as men. We seek significance. And if we can attach it to that, right? Like the sex that I have with my partner is so much better than any one night stands I ever had because of that connection. Yep. You're talking about money, what it provides for you. That's the kind of stuff that you're getting down to, right? So you can actually figure out what that stuff is is bringing to your life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. No, and also I'll, I'll add on that and just to say that, yeah, probably for me and also about being a man though, like for me, I get the most satisfaction out of seeing other people enjoy my company or see other people, you know, I can give back to other people yep. or I can um, assist other people to where they want to go. One of my favorite things is just connecting two people in an email. Like if they, if you, you need someone that, um, let's say for instance, Mike, you want to do a video and want, you want to end up on MTV. I know the guy from MTV and I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I can connect you guys. I get satisfaction out of doing yep. that. So it's like, I suppose now it's moved from like sex money and what did you say? Sex, money, and yeah, the physical, physical. But the other one is freedom and power, which is what money is going to provide for us, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think it's shifted for me now to be more um, like awareness of your surroundings and yeah. also look out for those people around you and how you can help them. And taking it from, I suppose, in the last twenty five years of my life has been a very selfish road to then opening up more and going, well, hang on, it's not all about you. It's about the people around you, and you actually get a lot of satisfaction and you get a lot of fulfillment in your life cool. out of doing that. So we've spoken a little bit about success there, so I'm interested to know, you know how you define it and how has that changed from the younger, perhaps more teenage Scott to the man now who's a lot more purposeful, basically. There's definitely been a huge shift because before it was about the money, you know, trying to get the chicks and just be this like ultra cool dude that's got everything. And now it's like there's, a, there's an actual shift there where for me it's about like fulfillment and about like yep. helping people. So getting myself still to a, a higher position in my job but that is all about giving back to people and it's about seeing satisfaction on people's faces. That to me, watching people smile and be happy, whether it's there's like they've got illness in their family, whether they're just having a t tough time or a bad day, if I can somehow assist with that, that is me being successful. I think when we grow up and a lot of men can be stuck in a place where success is around external validation and you've internalized that, which is great. So I'm interested to know because you're talking there about fulfillment and bringing joy to others and so on. So. Do you have an awareness to like what really drives you, kind of your core drivers? Mate, my brain speaks to me 24-7, hey? Like even when I go to bed, my best ideas are next to my bed at night. But I do have an awareness and it's, um, and now like in, only in the last couple of years, I've sort of defined it mm -hmm. and I've got like a filter which I run everything through and I'm like, is this what I want out of this world? Like is this what I want to be the best of me? Is this going to make me the best presenter and the best person in Australia and in the world? So I am very aware now of what, what does that. Every now and then I let my guard down, but we all have to do that. That's just being human, yeah. you know, and you're like, you might even just have a big night out and you're like, <laughs> oh, mate, you really shouldn't have done this or that. But that's, that's part yeah. of being human. But I am aware of where yep. I want to go to. And that took a long time to define. I'm only 28, which is still in male years. That's bloody young. Like, you're I'm just, exactly. It's <laughs> all the guys are like, you're a bloody kid. So I'm still redefining it. Yeah. And I could probably Absolutely. talk to you in five more years, but... I think it is important and I think a lot of guys, a lot of my friends that I see that are in these corporate worlds and are in these, you know, nine till fives, but you don't even, they're probably seven till 11 p.m. jobs. I don't think they've got yeah. theirs defined at the moment. They're just, they're just sort of following a system that they think is the right way to go and they yeah. are following a paycheck, which is the right way to go. But I don't see satisfaction in their lives yeah. and in themselves and I would love them to be in the position I'm in right now 
which is like, you know what? I'm feeling good about where I'm going and I'm not yeah. scared to take these risks. And yeah. I think I just want to sort of try and share that with them, which is exactly what you're doing <laughs> with guys out there, which is getting them to talk and discover yeah. who they are. Cool. And so, you know, because obviously it's very easy to generalize the nine to five or seven to 11 or whatever. Yeah. But the, the key difference there that you're talking about really is about purpose, right? You've got purpose in what you do. And, you know, as long as someone has purpose, right, and then they know what that is providing for them, I think is a very important point. All right, so we've spoken about success and a little bit about perhaps those conditioned masculine measures of success around sex and money and so on. So, let me ask you, as a 28-year-old male who's been through a few things and so on, this is obviously something we love to talk about here on the show. So, how would you define what it means to be a man today? All right, I think being a, a man today has all the things that we all know what it means to be a man today. So that's, you know, treating women with respect, um, treating yourself with respect. Yep. Um, and I suppose, you know, having a clear idea of what's right and wrong. I think that's a huge uh, definition of what it is to being a man. But I'll put it like probably in an example that we can all relate to and, and use successful sportsmen. But I find that the ones that are a, a man to me are the guys like Novak Djokovic, right? You know, he's number one in the world. But taking all that away, there's a person there that you can see deep down wants to help the world, yep. give his time up, um, wants to basically make this place a better place and like help people out as well. And even on a small scale, you can look at a guy that works at y your school, right? And he's there giving up his time to sort of basically educate people and make the world a better place, um, define what is right and wrong. I think that's what's being a man more so than having a big fast car, having a nice suit, having a hot wife, yeah. um, and also you know, ignoring all these emotions. I think, especially in 2016, and how much like suicide is, is you know, present yeah. in our society, Absolutely. and the pressures of, of Instagram, Facebook, you see all these glamorous lives, and you're like, sometimes, like, I flick through feeds, and I'm like, how the hell is that person on holidays? How how <laughs> they afford to go to Europe every single summer, and blah, 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 yeah. blah, and it messes with your head a lot. Yeah. So I think it's like, cutting all that crap away and just having conversations. Um, to be a man, I think you need to tick all those boxes. I still believe though, and, and this could be a very traditional way that I've been brought up, but when I have a wife, I want to be the provider in the house. But mm -hmm. I think her job can be bigger than mine. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to be the one earning more money. She could earn more money than me. Like that's not, it's not about the money, but it's about a wife is there and when she has a child, I want her to like nurture the child and look after the kids and we grow them together. But I want to be in a position where I can provide for the whole household. So I yep. still see that as being a man, you know, looking yep. after the house and goes back to the farming days, you know, bringing back the produce. And then um, that, that's just what I still believe yep. as being a man, but yep. twisting it into 2016, which is, you know, a lot of my bosses are women. Yep. Um, so it's, it's equality in the world yep. as well. So, and I think it's men have got to, wake up to that fact if they're still living in those Absolutely. old days where it's like, you know, footy, fishing, and you know, the men and the women are in the kitchen. Those yeah. days are 100 years, 200, 300 years old now. It's, yeah. it's like ha seeing equality for what it is and bringing out those best of values and the best of values of yourself. Absolutely. Does that make any sense at all? Yeah, very nice. Well, look, what I'm getting from that is one, be a real human being who yeah. isn't just self-centered, but does care and respect for himself, but also cares and looks out for and attempts to you know, make the people around his, uh, his life better, their life better. And, uh, you know, we are providers. So it is a masculine role to be the hunter, so to speak. That's the, an evolutionary thing. Um, one of the things that I think is a very important um, distinction, perhaps, from the traditional provider in terms of the Industrial Revolution Age, which is money and provide, is providing a space for the family, providing the space for your children to grow up and have a healthy upbringing. Yep. For your wife to have emotional health and whatever it may be, right? And, and that's kind of what I'm getting from your definition and from you in general. I'm interested to know and put you on the spot a little bit. Is there something that you don't talk about that you're willing to share with us today? Uh, you hit me up about this and you briefed me about this and I was like, I'm pretty, man, I talk a lot for my job. <laughs> Some people tell me to shut up, maybe it's, yeah, what don't I talk about? Um, I think I'd, I'd probably talk about a lot how um, I'm like not scared of failure, but I think that's to some extent a bit of a lie because it's funny, recently I was just doing an acting course and um, the teacher was telling me how 
you know, like us as humans, and, and you'd experience this when you're in front of a crowd or, you know, you're about to do something in front of a camera, which camera is actually more scary than a crowd sometimes. And you, you start to sweat up and you start to like, you know, get all nervous. And uh, time and time again, I tell people, I'm fine with all that, but that's t- to an extent bullshit because it's, yeah. it's part of my job, but I want to be the best of me I can always. So you put yourself under this pressure. And I think a lot of people can deal with this, you know, in any jobs, not just in TV, what I do, but it's like the pressure you put yourself under is sometimes like, it's a stupid amount. And I actually found out that, um, look, you'll see me right now, I've got probably got like quite red cheeks because when I get like flustered or really like motivated or into a, into a speech or whatever, I get red cheeks and I get it also when I get really nervous. And apparently it's this, um, I've forgotten every single medical term, Mike, so you can research and put it up on the screen if you want, but there's this like, there's this trigger in our brains that, and it goes back to like the stone ages. And this drama teacher was telling me this. He's like, it's because like when we were back in the stone ages, you actually, you only get this trigger, like sweaty palms and like the, dry y- mouth. yeah, dry mouth and yeah. you get all worked up either when it's life and death situations. And he's like, but how is that possible when you're going to an audition or talking in front of a crowd, you're getting these same triggers. And it was because back in the stone ages, we um, had to be accepted in a tribe. And actually, if you got outcasted from a tribe, they'd either kill you or just leave you onto your own and you'd end up you know, living on your own. So it was like a life and death situation where you actually have to perform. So it's about, for me right now, training my brain and going, well, mate, it's not a life and death situation. You're not under that much pressure. No one, you're not going to die. So get over that. Your body, you're being stupid. Brain, relax. Stop doing that. So for me, like, I suppose getting back to the question you said, though, like, what don't I talk about? I suppose for me, I don't talk about enough the pressure I put myself under. Um, And I don't talk about it like, you know, I set a very high standard for myself and I want to reach that standard. In the last like two or three years, I haven't met a lot of those goals, but it's about, I think what I'm most proud of myself is just picking myself back up and going, all right, don't worry about that. That's not, you can't change that. So it's like, you've got to just reset your goals and try it differently in another way. But yeah, I, I... I'd hate talking about the sort of failures of people and you always catch up with people and they're like, you know, how are you going? You get that all the time, like in Sydney, and it's always yeah. like, oh, busy. And, yeah, then, really and, and then people are like, night. what's next? And you're like, fuck, there's nothing. And you're like, you've got to try and bullshit way around that. Yeah. But I, I suppose I need to just become more present with the fact that, you know, right now there isn't, there's nothing next, but I'm creating that next thing and yeah, I've got to be cool. comfortable with that. Yeah. And so I think what we're really getting there as well is, and it's obviously common, it's the internal story and dialogue that goes on. And totally, it can be man. Endless, right? Yeah. And, you know, it could be quite beneficial on occasions to share that, but we just roll it around in our heads, right? And for me, that's, I, I resonate with that. I'm easily caught up in my own head a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, and, and not maybe just sinking into how I'm feeling, but just trying to rationalize and, and, and intellectualize everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, my, my, my mind works in overdrive, but I love that because it like, keeps me on my toes. And, um, it, you know, I always think of other things but then I get put too many things on at one time so sometimes it's like chill out dude it's all good and just keep sticking to that plan so leaving the conversation now that's in your head what do you think is the bigger conversation that needs to be had and are you having it I think it's just more aware of the people around me Um, and, and as you said what's the bigger conversation well the bigger conversation for me is initiating that conversation with people that need to have that conversation. Yeah. That's a lot of conversations, one <laughs> sentence. But I think it's, you know, stopping and just going, forget about your own life for once and just start thinking about the people around you and seeing if, you know, there's ways you can help them out yeah. and there's ways that you can assist if they're in a sticky situation at the moment. And in return, that's actually going to build on what I talked about before as being success for me. Yeah. yeah. So having those conversations with other people, finding out where their weaknesses are and then seeing if I can assist it or will in turn help me out as well. Well, mate, thanks for opening up and getting into that. Yeah, that was cool. And thank you for, for being here today and really um, giving us a window into the real Scott Tweedy. It's been great, so thank you. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. Make sure to share this with at least one man who you think will enjoy or benefit from it. For those men who want to be part of conversations like this in person, click the link below and go to beyondthebeers.tv slash event to find out all the details and get your tickets for Beyond the Beers, the event, conversations and cool shit for men. That's happening in Sydney on Saturday, August 20th. 
There'll be a variety of conversations and cool shit to help you learn, share, and grow, and then start embracing more meaningful conversations in your own life. To learn more about Mike and how you can work with us, visit mikecampbell.com.au for loads of free content and information on how to become a better man and get more out of your life, including our half-day Solve Yourself workshop, laying the foundations for personal mastery. If you want to connect with or follow today's guests, we'll leave all the details in the show notes below. Otherwise, go out into your own life and start having the conversations that matter. Ask for help if you need it. Ask a mate how he's really doing or if he just wants to have a real conversation and go beyond the beers.